and how the coronavirus pandemic is currently affecting your business. Um, we had a little bit of uh, you know tech trouble, but no worries. We can still get the party going and continue to provide you with great content. One of the things I want you to do is to make sure that you share this video with people in your network. I want you to do that right now. Tag three people. Uh, if you're coming on, whether on the live or on the replay, I want you to tag three people who you know uh, needs content, who needs to understand what to do about their contracts, the essential uh, clauses that they need to have in their contracts. Perhaps you were having a discussion with a friend and they're worried about their contracts in the nature of what's going on. We want to make sure that we get the right information in the right hands. And so we need your help getting out uh, the word about this fantastic presentation that is about to occur and the fantastic signature CEO conference. So I encourage you and I implore you to do that right now. And so as I'm going to speak for the next 20 minutes or so, we are going to highlight five top points. And I want you to make sure that you have a pen and paper handy because this is going to be instrumental when it comes to setting a very strong legal foundation for your business, particularly in reference to the contracts that you are using on a day in and day out basis. Why is this important? It's important to have strong contractual agreements when you are providing services that are going to impact someone's life, someone's business. These are very, very, very important moments in the lives of your clients. And many of those particular those clients have had their worlds turned upside down. They are worried that they're not going to be able to have their events. They're worried that they're not going to have their wedding. They're worried that they have to push things back. And so we want to make sure that as a savvy business owner, as a savvy professional, that you are equipping yourself to handle the things uh, that are possibly unexpected. OK, so the things that you are going to learn today are why it's important to have everything when it comes to your contracts in writing, the difference between a force majeure clause and a commercial impracticability clause, how you can anticipate uh, the unexpected and incorporate that into your contract. And finally, why payment plans with unique terms are absolutely essential. We're going to cover those five areas today in our talk. So let's talk about number one, get everything in writing. Of course, you all are sophisticated business owners and you might think, of course, duh, Takora, why are you telling me to get everything in writing? Because even the most sophisticated and savvy individuals, people who haven't been experienced in business for years, can sometimes let their guards down, especially when you are working with family and friends. I recently had a friend of mine uh, reach out to me and they said, Jacora, I got myself in a pickle. I know I shouldn't have done this, but uh, this is the situation at hand. And so they were telling me, listen, I have an event coming up. I hired a friend and I paid this friend approximately $15,000, one large lump sum, because I wanted them to record the entire event. And this event was going to be a huge conference, um, it was going to have tons of speakers and people. And of course, content is king. You want to capture those video moments. And that's why, obviously, it's super important that he wanted to have a savvy videographer there with a team in place. But he paid him that sum of money without a contract in place. And of course, the unexpected happened. The pandemic came. The conference had to be moved to a virtual conference instead of an in-person conference. So really, all the money that he spent on this videographer, the videographer is not going to be able to perform their services as a result. So he's left with paying someone for a service in full that they have not been able to render and the videographer instead of providing a refund is saying well you can get credit for next year's conference or i'll do the services next year right and for my friend they're really like hmm you know uh that's not what they want <laughs> especially during this time they would much rather get some type of money back especially because the majority of the work that the videographer would have done has not even been done yet. One, you have to record, then you have to edit, then you have to make sound clips. None of those things have happened. 
So I can pretty much guarantee that that videographer is probably using that money to keep that business afloat. Uh, but because there's no contract in place and because they were friends, there's some there's obviously some tension there, right? So I want you to remember that no matter who the person is that you are doing business with, always get it in writing. So, and if you find yourself in a situation where you in, got into a contractual agreement with someone and they don't have, and you don't have things in writing, you can always go back and try to put a contract together after the fact. You can send emails trying to memorialize the agreement. There's some ways where you can try to have some expectations in place, but really nothing is better than a very strong contract from the beginning. Ideally, if you can do it, work with an attorney to create a customized agreement for your unique business and the unique needs that you have, because it's going to save you lots of time and lots of money knowing that you have that particular peace of mind in place. The second point I want to talk about are the differences between a force majeure clause and a commercial impracticability clause. Force majeure clauses are acts of God, you know, basically stating that I'm not able to provide my services because of some type of act of God that occurred. This could be a hurricane, a tornado, a monsoon, a blizzard, an earthquake, right? Most of us have those agreements, uh, excuse me, those provisions within our unique contracts. If it's not there, it needs to be in there asexually, like today. So you want to make sure that if you are not able to provide your services, because of an act of God, then you are not going to be held liable. You're not going to be required to provide a full refund that you are going to have to make some type of arrangement with the client to provide the services at a reasonable period of time. But most people know about force majeure. What most people don't have in their contracts is someone something called commercial impracticability or impossibility of performance clause. This is something that would be clutch. I mean, right now, if you don't have that in your agreements, you absolutely should because due to the nature of what is happening with the pandemic, it is literally impossible for people to provide their services. It's not that they don't want to provide the services. It's not that they can't provide the services. It's not even that they don't have the supplies or the people to provide the services. They are not able to provide services based on uh, governmental municipal laws due to governmental shutdowns, right? So we need to make sure that we're accounting for the unexpected in the event you literally are not able to provide your services within an agreement. That is something that most people don't have in their agreements. And, you know, someone could reasonably make an argument that a pandemic is not an act of God. Because generally acts of gods are something dealing with nature, something that is outside of our control. And yes, the pandemic is outside of our control, but it's not technically something that traditionally falls underneath the scope of an act of God. So I think to cover yourself, you should have a force majeure clause and some type of commercial and practicability clause or a possibility of performance clause within your agreements to make sure that you are completely covered, not just from things that are unexpected or outside of your control when it comes to environmental factors, but also something that deals with the government. That is probably the biggest takeaway that I think you can walk away from today, knowing that you need that type of clause within your agreement. Four, the next thing that I think you definitely need to have in your contractual agreements is to anticipate having to move a venue or cancel a venue. Having a clause within your agreement that reserves the right, particularly for people who are having conferences or some type of workshops, many people in the wedding and event planning industry or just in the business industry in general, you are also providing in-person workshops or retreats or getaways, right? And so what happens if a pandemic occurs and you are not able to provide the service then there should be something within your contract where you are saying, I will reserve the right to transition an in-person event to a virtual event, right? And, uh, you know, due to things or due to things that are outside of my control, you having that right, being able to reserve that right is a huge 
power play that you'll be able to use so that if you have to transition your conference, which is a big in-person conference to something virtual, you're not going to have to think like, oh, well, will I have to refund tickets? You know, will I have to, you know, kind of uh, do things like that? No, you, you can pretty much put that into the contract where people who agree to purchase tickets, they're also agreeing that in the event this has to transition to a virtual option, that it's completely fine if it does. And so we want to make sure that you are able to implement those things as well. So I would definitely say that you want to make sure that you have that within your agreements as well, because otherwise, again, you might be faced with someone demanding or requesting a refund. And unfortunately, because you put in a lot of time and energy and sweat equity into planning an in-person event or conference or retreat or workshop or incubator, whatever you want to call it, you can still retain those funds and provide the service, right? This most of what we do can be provided through online tools and technology, thankfully. But someone could reasonably make an argument that that's not what they paid for. They paid for also the experience of being able to network and commingle and things like that in person. And a lot of a lot of great connections are made in person. But we still want to make sure that your contracts are living and breathing documents. If you have if you're still using the same contract that you use in year one of your business and you're in year three or four or five, you need to take it and get someone to review it quickly because I know it's outdated. I know it probably is not growing with what you're offering in your business, nor is it growing with, you know, what you are, you know, providing. So we want to make sure that as you are looking at your systems on a regular basis, as you're looking at your team on a regular basis, that you also incorporate into the health of your business, looking at your legal structure. Do I need to transition from an LLC to an S Corp? Do I need to update any of my contractual agreements? Do I need to, you know, um, you know, make sure that my tax liability is a little different? These are things that you need to incorporate in the regular updating of your systems so that it becomes like you, you're running your business on cloud clockwork and you're not treating your business in terms of updating your legal agreements as an afterthought or being reactionary. We want you to start being proactive when it comes to these things so that you continue can continue to grow your business with peace of mind. And finally, another thing that I see that is often missing in contractual agreements are payment plans with unique terms that are tied to every single payment. What does this mean? What you can have within the body of your agreement is every single time that someone remits a payment, a partial payment towards the overall payment of the service they're hiring you for, connected with that payment is a term that states this payment is made uh, and it's earned in its entirety by the company or the party and it is compensation for work that has been performed up to this date. Why is that important? It's highly important that you have payment plans in place to protect you because a court of law is going to look at you more favorably if you are able to show and justify that every single payment that you got was compensation for work that you performed up to that date. Because let's be real, if you are providing services uh, and the service delivery, meaning the execution is going to occur a year out, there's tons of preparation that you have to make in advance before you are able to provide the service on the requested date. And so you wanna make sure that as you are having multiple meetings with the engaged couple or the, the uh, individual who wants your services, or if you're going to put orders in for certain materials and you have to make things, or if you're going to make sure that you are preparing your staff for a variety of things, that those payments are compensating you for the work that you have performed up to that particular date. And it's even better if you can tie the delivery of certain services or the execution of certain services to those payment dates as well. Those payment plans can really help you right now because if someone just gives you a lump sum of money and you don't have payment plans attached to that a lump sum of money or you don't you can't show how basically that money is being distributed if someone sues you it's much more likely that it'll be in the judge's hands of how much money that they're going to give back to the party who contracted with you 
right? And so we want to make sure that we're using our contracts as both a sword and a shield right? And so again, that's why it's super important to have payment plans because ultimately it's going to almost always work out in your favor. And so those, um, as a recap, <laughs> I want to talk about the things that I just hit on in today's presentation. One, get everything in writing. It doesn't matter how well you know the individual. We want to make sure that you have your agreement memorialized in writing. Two, Know the difference between a force majeure clause and a commercial and practicability clause. Have both within your agreement so you can anticipate for not only the unexpected when it comes to acts of God, but the unexpected when it comes to man-made or, you know, man-made things, right? And so we want to make sure that if a government uh, issues an order that prevents you from providing your service, that there is some sort of sort of remedy and protection there for you and your business. Um, the next, we want you to be able to anticipate um, if you need to transition an event where you're providing a service or you're providing a product. If it, if um, if something happens where it's outside of your control, where you're not able to provide your service in person, you need to be able to anticipate transitioning that to a virtual event or some type of alternate, um, you know, alternate option. Whether you say you reserve the right to reschedule or postpone the conference to a later date, you need to be able to anticipate that in your agreement and put people on notice. And finally, strongly consider payment plans. When you have those payment plans in place, we want to make sure um, that you are able to uh, have, again, you want to make sure that you have uh, payment plans in place so that you are able to tie uh, the payments received for compensation of work done up to this date. All right. So I am going to look at some questions that I think have rolled in. Uh, is there anything as a pro bono contract? Sure, I mean, you can provide, um, yes, you can create a pro bono contract or you can just use a basic client services agreement contract and state that the compensation uh, is, is, is going to be zero monetary compensation, but it's in exchange for maybe skills and experience gain. Some people like to do pro bono work so that they can build up their portfolio. So any con contracts don't have to have money being exchanged for it to be a real contract. The only thing that needs to be exchanged is that something of value must be provided in exchange for something else. So if you're providing service, there is a monetary value tied to that service and it is something of value that you're providing. And therefore, what you want to do is you wanna make sure that that is noted within the contract. And if you're requiring the person that you're providing pro bono services to, to do something in exchange for receiving pro bono services, that should be outlined in your agreement as well. Maybe you want a client testimonial. Maybe you want them wanna make sure that you have tons of pictures from the event. Um, it could be a variety of things, but obviously there's a reason I would hope that you're providing pro bono services because you need to make sure that you're building up maybe a portfolio for your business. So make sure that whatever it is that you want to get out of providing free services, that that's clear. Sarah says, if we do not have any of those clauses at the time, then the client has the upper hand. Um, they might just have more negotiating room because, um, uh, yeah, they might have more negotiating room. Um, I don't want to say that they have the upper hand. I think it's just more so that a court will be looking at it more so in their favor. Um, so it's, it's certainly possible. And I think it depends on everyone's unique situation to figure out how they're going to navigate these things. Let's see. I'm trying to make sure, are there any other questions that are coming through? I'm happy to answer anything. I want to make sure you guys take advantage of me um, while I'm here. Tara says, what if a client chooses a new date and you are not available for the rescheduled date and they want a refund? Um, 
Well, I think it depends on what your contract says, right? So if the contract states that you will provide a refund or a partial refund, if the rescheduled date is not available, then, you know, you need to honor your contract. However, if, you know, you, um, if your contract states something along the lines of we're happy to, to provide our services at a rescheduled date, that we are available on. However, if you choose a date that we're not available, that we will not provide a refund. It just really depends on the terms of the contract itself. Another thing is trying to, to see, okay, can we provide this service? And if we can, who can we partner with? Is there another wedding or event professional in your area that you can kind of call on and say, listen, you know, uh, I need your assistance on this day, you know, and you could be a subcontractor or independent contractor through my company and you can execute and provide the particular service. That's always another option as well. Um, so you can still honor that date, but you don't have to be the individual present providing that service. And sometimes that happens with companies as they grow. The more they grow, they don't necessarily have like the head event planner or the head person providing the service there. And so it may be possible based on your agreements, can you subcontract that out? Uh, everyone can find me by visiting creatorslawfirm.com or you can find me on Instagram at Takora Davis um, or Big Creators Law Firm. Um, so you can most definitely find me at Takora Davis on Instagram or on Facebook at the creatorslawfirm.com. You can always visit my website, which is my first and last name, JacoraDavis.com or creatorslawfirm.com and being able to connect with me there. Yes, we are taking on new clients. We're actually still pretty busy. And I think it's because we're trying to serve all the small business owners that we serve at this hour. Um, and so we are definitely, the team is ripe and ready to provide anyone with support that we can. I'm actually providing a free legal consultation this Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so that I can dive even more deeper into contractual concerns and make sure I'm able to answer more questions that people may have. So I love, um, you know, doing things like that. So I wanted to make sure I gave that too. So we're doing that this Thursday as well. Uh, can you say a little on contract addendums because of all the date changes? So an addendum to a contract is basically an additional contract, like a subcontract or, you know, basically something that you can tack on to the original contract. Addendum should always be in place if you know that there's going to be key changes that are going to be made to the like material facts or um, key, key facts or key dates or key elements to the original. And so an addendum is basically another contractual agreement that covers any changes um, in maybe date, time, location, anything major based on the original agreement. And so what happens is your original agreement and the addendum will be read together. They will be considered together. And so most agreements that I, um, that I draft will state that any type of change to this contract must be done with another agreement. And so having an, an addendum in play will be so awesome because you're able to say, OK, this was our original agreement. Now things have changed. We want to get you to sign something new. And so that means everybody's on the same page when it comes to the second um, second time. And I think that's really smart. If you have clients who are saying that they want to reschedule and you didn't have some of these clauses within the agreement, it's time to add them in the addendum. Michelle says, do I need an attorney in my state? It depends on the type of legal service that you want. Um, it, I think it's always really good to try to get an attorney who's licensed in your state to provide certain services. Um, I'm a trademark attorney. So a lot of people come to me and they say, I want to trademark my business name. Well, I can have clients in any state because I'm practicing federal law. Um, some contractual provisions, sometimes it is good to have a, 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 an attorney in your state. But I think more than anything, you need to make sure that the attorney you're working with understands your industry. Many attorneys uh, like me, um, they may, well, excuse me, many attorneys, whether they're like me or not, 
they don't understand the industry. And so you want to make sure someone understands your industry uh, more than anything. And I think if you can find someone who is in your state, that's definitely a, a great concern. And I think it's really smart to do that. But make sure that they understand your unique industry, what it's like being in your particular profession so that they can help you uh, anticipate certain things. All right. I think any other any other questions for me, guys? I hope that you found value in the tips that I provided today. Um, I know it's tough times. Everybody remain encouraged. Keep your head up. Um, let me know. You feel free to uh, send me a message or Tara if you're interested in attending that free legal consultation I'll be providing. Um, so and make sure that you really take the time to look over the five points that I made today and figure out how you can incorporate them into your own agreements. And as soon as possible, work with someone who can have those things in place for you, because you want to make sure as you're moving forward that your agreements protect you and they don't leave you vulnerable. OK. Anything else, Tara? Anything else for me, guys? I I just want to make sure that I answer everybody's question. It looks like I have. I don't want to leave anyone high and dry. Come good. Okay. Well, with that being said, I'm going to just go ahead and end my talk today. It was a pleasure speaking with everyone here today. I pray that you got a tremendous amount of value from me and that you know exactly what you need to do when it comes to improving your existing contractual agreements and putting a pin and making sure that you're able to connect with the right person to provide you with service. You have a fantastic day. Keep your head up, stay focused, and power through this pandemic as best as you can. Bye.